and I didn't know that I would be able to add anything new. Um, but then as I did some initial research, I found that there was so much I didn't know about the events that took place here and talking to other people that, in fact, very few people knew what happened during those final days. And I thought it was such an important story and such an important part of our history um, that I was, I was um, very interested in telling that story. And then when I uncovered some of the personal stories and these stories of the heroes who had sacrificed so much um, and been really willing to sacrifice their own lives to save the Vietnamese, then, then I was hooked. And then, you know, it was, I really wanted to tell this story. So. Where did you get next some of the footage from? So the question is, where did I get some of the footage from? So we did, you know, a lot of the traditional archival houses, the ABC, NBC, CBS, and they were a great source, and we tried to dig deeper into those. Um, when I was developing this film, I had another film, which I think a number of you were at the screening here a couple years ago of Ethel, that was coming out, and I was showing it at theaters and screening places throughout the East Coast, and I was inviting people who I identified as wanting to interview for this film to those screenings to meet them and introduce myself and whatnot. Anyway, so in the DC screening, there was a, there was a fellow there who had been on the uh, USS Kirk, and I was telling him about what we were planning on doing and, and what our intention was. And, um, and he came back to me about 15 minutes later, and he said, you know, you talked about the, the Kirk and the story, and it's so important. He said, you know, I was talking to my buddy a few months ago, and he said he was just up in his attic and came across all of the Super 8 footage that it was undeveloped. And it was, of, it was of the USS Kirk. Would you be interested in that? <laughs> I said, yes, I'd be very interested in that. So I got the guy's cell a phone number, and I called him at 9 o'clock the next morning, and I said, you know, I'd love to get this footage, and can I FedEx it? And he wouldn't let, he was very protective of it, and he wouldn't let me FedEx it to us. But, so I flew him out to California on a plane with a box in his hand, and he brought it out, and we developed it, and 12 minutes of, of our footage is, you know, all the, the story of the Chinook, the helicopters going overboard, the flag raising, lowering at the end of the film, those images of, of you know, the, the overcrowded ships, that, the, that was all his footage. So that was, you know, that was a huge source and, Bob, and great fun. Question. Moving Pastor on. Pastor Martin, Martin, was this the end of his career and how has he been treated in history? Uh, well, he died of cancer a few years after this. Um, so, yeah, this was basically the end of his, his career. And, um, you know, he's, I mean, I think that he's, he's treated, uh, well, I, I feel like we 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 try we really tried to capture him in this that he was you know he was mixed he was mixed um, way up there. I represented Frank Snap uh, after this was over, and his heroism in trying to get as many people out as possible really ruined the end of his career with the CIA. Is that the general lesson here that people who took risks and disobeyed orders? I saw that Armitage had, you know he had a good career after that. What decided whether the heroes here were treated badly or well by our government after Well, it's a good question, and I think it's a complicated answer, and I think it really depends on the individual and those circumstances, because there were many people who did illegal things who were then considered and treated as heroes after the war, and then there were you know, others who were fully marginalized and, and whose, whose career was ended as a result. Um, and Frank Snap, you know, he, he then wrote a book, as you know, about the events that took place, and, and you know, he had some challenges and difficulties as a result of that. Um, so I think it, it really depended on exactly what you did, what you revealed, what the conditions were, and, you know, what your position was, and how well, well you were able to kind of navigate that world. Cool, well, right here. What are you working on now? Um, well, I, uh, I have two films that I'm producing, uh, part of a series called Makers, which is a PBS series about women, and so I'm doing an hour on women in politics and women in Hollywood, which I'm, which I'm finishing. And then this film I'm really um, committed to, and it's coming out in theaters in the fall, where it's going to about 15 theaters. It's continuing to show in film festivals before it's broadcast on PBS in April. So I'm, I'm, I'm going out with it. Angry. I mean, it would have just fallen to the hands of the Vietnamese, North Vietnamese anyway, the 
desks and the tables and the file cabinets. Mm -hmm. and isn't it good that they took it? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, that wasn't my term, looting, obviously, but that was the newscaster. And I think that, um, you know, it was, I, I agree that it was a complicated time, but I think that the film is sympathetic to that moment and ultimately is kind of understanding of why they're doing that. Even though there's, you know, that word is used, I think ultimately you kind of emotionally feel for the people who are doing it and, you know, aren't judgmental in those, in those terms exactly. David? Yeah, the 130,000 yeah, 130, that uh, were evacuated, where did they end up? They, they went to the Philippines. What was the journey from Well, there? almost all of them ended up in the United States. And part of what we're doing um, with our outreach efforts around the film is trying to gather some of those stories and putting them online uh, of the Vietnamese who came here, who came to this country, what happened to them. Because it's an extraordinary story and, and a hugely successful story of uh, a, a culture and a group of people who came to this country and were integrated very quickly and, and have been a hugely um, important part of our nation and contributed in, in enormous ways. Um, so we're excited to share, to share that story beyond the film on, on PBS online. And Rory, do you want to say something about the outreach that you're going to be doing and how anyone in the audience might contribute or be a part of that? Um, that's so nice. Well, we are, we are engaging in an outreach campaign and um, the hope is to try to, you know, extend the, the reach and the impact of the film to as many audiences as possible. One of the great things and um, kind of surprising experiences for me is sharing this film with Vietnamese um, because I would say not to generalize, but largely speaking, it's a culture where they, they haven't really talked about what happened during these final days. And, and this has opened up uh, a dialogue in that community that's been really significant and, and um, very uh, humbling to witness for me. Um, and so we're really excited to reach out to that community to engage them, to include their stories, and um, and to reach out to you know general audiences. We're we're going into schools, educational programs, and facilities to try to really um, reach as as large number of people as possible. And um, we're doing that through PBS, and we're doing an Indiegogo campaign, which just started yesterday, and um, we've raised twenty four thousand dollars. So that's exciting. Um, so we'd love for your involvement, so. <laughs> yes, yes, this gentleman. It's a very, uh, a very good film and very engaging, and a very engaging story. What do you think is, if, if there is one, what, do you, what is the point, uh, editorial point, if you will, that you're trying to make in the film? Is it that we didn't do what we should have done? Is it that Graham Martin was a bit of a I don't know, not right. if you want to call it that. But what, I think, what? you know, I mean, it's, I didn't have a particular agenda in making this film, and I'm, you know, very happy that it's, we didn't do any interviews with experts. There's nobody looking back. It's all people on the front lines talking about what had happened. And I, um, and I think that's important to tell this story, to simply tell the story and to have it documented. Because a lot of people don't know what happened in those last days. I think that it's um, very hard at this juncture to watch this film and not think about what's going on in Iraq and Afghanistan. Yes. So I think, you know, my hope is that that audiences might draw a connection and see what's going on there. And what I would say is, going back to, to the question up at the top there, is that it's very hard once you get to this point, when you're in the last days, to have any good decisions made because there are no good decisions to be made, really. And so what you have to do is think about when you get into a war, when you get into Iraq, when you get into Afghanistan, when you're thinking about getting into Syria and other places, what's your exit strategy? How are we going to get out of this? What's that going to look like? What are our responsibilities? So, you know, that to me is the obvious sort of connection to, to what's happening.